Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for attending today. Um, today's presentation will be on Swap C solutions for advanced radar systems. Um, I'm Paul Prudhomme, uh, product line manager for GAN Mimic Power Amplifiers. Here is the agenda for today's discussion. We'll start off with a, a brief market overview, um, have a discussion about applications for radar, and then also dig into the evolving architectures that are taking place. Um, a little dive into Swap C and making Swap C kind of concrete. We see it spoken about often and written about. Um, we tie it to some you know, concrete performance and um, package attributes. We'll uh, talk about RF power and packaging and how that how technology advancement has led to some flexibility, at, especially at the higher power levels for radar systems at this time. We've got a new technology to talk about today, and that's the reconfigurable technology that um, is just being introduced for production level products. Um, we'll get into heterogeneous packaging in the form of TR modules. This is multi-die modules for uh, transmit receive functionality. And we'll wrap up with advanced packaging and next steps to take SWAPC even further. So beginning with market overview, this is a um, compilation from uh, strategy analytics. And as you can see, the, the global defense market for radar, it's a sizable market at about $16 billion for the defense sector, um, a nice growth rate of 16% uh, you know, year over year. And so ASA radars are one of the driving factors to this growth. And within ASAs, there's many elements. So the, the semiconductor technology, um, in particular GAN, is, um, is noted as a beneficiary in ASA systems. So when looking at radar applications, the, the first thing that's striking is the pervasiveness. So if we look from automotive or traditional systems, but just take a look at cars today and the number of radar systems that are within automobiles, um, traditional systems like uh, long range defense with ground based systems, um, you know, big market in maritime, as well as uh, weather radar is also very popular on the, on the nightly news, especially this time of year in Texas when hails and tornadoes come our way. Um, the tracking of, um, of objects in, in orbit is also another interesting application that is, uh, is actually growing across um, different parts of the spectrum. Um, um, this is an interesting contrast of, you know, the more traditional and even historic um, single feed parabolic antenna um, type of radar system. Um, in contrast to um, hundreds or thousands of elements in a phased array. And the interesting thing about you know, the single antenna that's used, for example, in air traffic uh, control, air traffic surveillance, is um, you've got a mechanically rotating high gain parabolic antenna with a you know, high power transceiver. And um, the contrast of that, which is still relevant and manufactured, you've got uh, solid state in, in place of tubes in some cases today, but it's still a very relevant architecture and contrast that to a phased array. And the, one of the things you notice is that, you know, thousands of elements versus a single element. Um, when we look at the, the, just the scale of a phased array system, it, it makes it, you know, rather interesting. And then anything that can be done that is a swap C benefit applies times that, you know, 100 element or 1,000 element or 10,000 element multiplier. So a small change gets multiplied by the number of uh, transceiver elements, and that can lead to large savings in cost or power consumption or weight. Um, another interesting thing about phased arrays is that um, with the size of the arrays and the number of elements through independent control or through software defined controls, you, you have the ability um, to have uh, multifaceted uh, use cases. So that's effectively software defined architecture that becomes you know, software and processing power defined. Digging into you know, Swap C and you know, why do we care about it? Why is it written about? Um, on one hand, it's performance and how do you enhance performance? And on the other end is um, you know, how do you cut expenses, both in terms of 
um, cost for the equipment as well as cost for maintenance. So here, there's some just concrete examples of how we attain some swap C benefits. And in terms of size, anything that we can do uh, increases integration, um, shrinks package size, shrinks package volume, lowers bomb count, um, provides a, um, a size benefit. And then in terms of uh, weight, you think of applications where you know weight matters, and in particular, you know, think about I think about satellites, I think about um, drones, I think about aircraft. So anything that's done to reduce the amount of weight of any particular radar system, it, it does have some benefit in terms of the amount of time um, an aircraft can stay airborne because with less weight, fuel burn could go down. So that's you know, an example of concrete benefit for having a uh, weight reduced. In terms of power, it's um, you know, it's, it's that's multifaceted in the sense that you know for the RF guys and we RF guys, it's um, you know RF power gives us range, and so more RF power uh, to each element is uh, you know, more range. With more elements, you have more resolution. Um, but also with power, you've got the heat element. So power in terms of power consumption um, is something where you know, if we have the ability to increase efficiency, for example. Um, the amount of heat that we're generating, the amount of heat that we have to manage, um, that will reduce. So providing a benefit um, on the cost on the cost side, you know, anything here that again reduces component count, what uh, supply chain has to procure, uh, the number of parts that have to be manufactured, and how they're manufactured, hand assembly versus SMT, and then we'll get into like operating and, and service life, where if um, the service interval for like an all solid state design, for example. It may uh, have the the maintenance interval or core of the maintenance interval and that leads into you know, longer term reduction in operating cost. A slide on enabling technologies. So in the case of Corvo, um, you know, multi um, multifaceted in terms of the number of uh, semiconductor technologies that are in use, including uh, gallium arsenide, gallium nitride. Uh, as well as silicon and insulator, um, you know, coupling that with uh, packaging capability, and you know, that includes you know, you know, traditional like a flange package that's bolt down that has um, you know high heat benefits, but also getting into the, the world of uh, like SMT assembly, you know, anything that's a QFN or an air cavity SMT package, for example, it enables more components to go down through um, like lower cost uh, SMT manufacturing processes, and you know. Integrating these elements uh, just re it leads to you know size reduction, um, bomb cost reduction. I mean, all enablers that feed into um, you know the swap C equation. So, word on um, gallium nitride on silicon carbide. Um, in in the world of radar and and swap C um, improvements, you know, GAN does provide a significant um, swap seat benefit for radar systems, and in particular, you know, these these key bullet points is um, is high RF power for the amount of size, that is the amount of area that the that the die occupies, and then with GAN, the the junction temperature that can be attained reliably is a uh, is again a significant benefit. In this case, um, you know, ten to the seven hours mean time to failure at two hundred twenty five degrees Celsius. I mean, those things plus the the heat transfer of silicon carbide, you know, that leads to a very high reliable solid state solution that is a swap C benefit for radar systems. I'm going to transition to uh, packaging, and this is a contrast of uh, flange and QFN packages for mimic power amplifiers, um, but also for ion pets. And you know, the contrasting thing is there's there's package choices, and there is um, you know a mimic power amplifier versus an IMF IMF type um, amplifier, and what makes the the swap C discussion compelling is that in a in a relatively short period of time, let's just look in the last 18 months, 24 months, um, the the options of high power in this case were this example is is S band, so we've got a 400 watt um, flange base IM FET, we've got a 100 watt flange base Mimic PA, and then below that is this um, 150 watt uh, QPA 3070. 
And so we're going to put two flange mounted packages at, that, at those you know, 100 watt, 400 watt power levels. But then looking at QPA3070, this is a QFN package, seven by seven millimeters with 150 watts of PSET. And so for a system whose power to the antenna is roughly 150 watts, what this, both the, the GAN mimic PA technology as well as the packaging technology enable is the final stage can go down as part of the main board um, SMT processing. And so if you think about some of the benefits there, you know, hand assembly versus SMT assembly, there's a cost savings. Um, weight, um, also you can think parts to procure. So it's a way to um, improve or lower the, the, let's say the board level expense or the expense per element. And it also allows more of the manufacturing to be on an automated SMT line. So there's also a place for you know flange packages. So we're a fan of both. We're a fan, we're a fan of um, single stage ion fets as well as mimics. Um, and it comes into the trade space of what the mission, what the uh, what the system needs to do. Um, in the case of you know longer pulse, long duty cycle, even even CW type, CW type applications, you know the heat management becomes more of a, a driving um, type of system requirement. In the case of radar, which may be um, well let's just say short pulse radar, um, the heat for a 150 watt device at S-band is, is far easier to manage and that enables um, packaging in, uh, in a small SMT package. This is a more in-depth technical view of this QPA 3070. <clears throat> Some of the highlights, um, you know, 58% power added efficiency at 150 watts of RF power. And this is accomplished on, you know, uh, GAN 25, so 25 micrometer, um, GAN with a high voltage process. This uh, device is biased at uh, 50 volts DC. Um, as you can see, it's a 7 by 7 millimeter QFN. Transitioning into new technologies. So reconfigurable um, technology is is an interesting area. There's been publications on different approaches. Some of those approaches have been proof of concept, you know, brass board type of uh, implementations. Um, reconfigurable in this context is, um, is dual band operation. So in this case, it's both uh, S band and X band. And the, the, the concept is we have a, a single GAN amplifier where circuit elements are switched in and switched out um, you know, through control lines. And so you have instantaneous um, reconfiguration of the amplifier to be purely an S-band amplifier or purely an X-band amplifier. And you know, where would something like this fit? Well, obviously applications where both S-band and X-band are needed in the system. It could be systems where you've got two independent radar systems, an S-band well, a radar system, for example, and an X-band um, system that are, you know, independent, independent housings, independent locations. And through reconfigurable technology, um, it's an enabler to allow those systems to be combined into a, a single system. Um, in the case of this QPA 0007 um, in particular, it, it would fit where the, the PSAT level um, of this amplifier meets the, the system applications of the radar. Um, and as kind of alluded to previously, as it relates to swap C, there's um, you know, many attributes in swap C where you can see something like reconfigurable technology would play into the equation because we're talking about moving from two independent systems at S-band and X-band and combining those into a single system. So overall complexity and bomb count and weight, all of that's reduced with um, this technology. And in particular, you think, okay, back to, you know, where does, uh, where are those benefits? Where is it used? You know, satellite ships, aircraft, um, some of the first things that come to mind, but also systems that are, you know, going in a backpack or, you know, on a mobile platform where, you know, the amount of weight that you can add to a vehicle, for example, is limited or may in fact the way a vehicle handles. This is, um, this, this might be the first um, information you see on this QPA 0007, but it is a, 
Okay, it is a QFM package. It's actually a seven by six millimeter SMT package that uh, provides 32 watts at S band at 47% power out of efficiency and 21 dB of large signal gain. And then through you know, toggling, you instantaneously move from S band to X band where you can operate nine to 11 gigahertz at 28 watts with 32% uh, power out of efficiency and 21 dB of large signal gain. Um, this product is now production released, and um, there's a sister part as well. We've got a QPA0004 that will be production released shortly, and that is approximately a 10 watt device at both S band and X band. This is an interesting side by side performance comparison, if you will, of how could a dual SX band be implemented today. Um, and if we look at the middle, um, at the middle example, you know, one approach is, well, an amplifier that is wide enough to pass both uh, S band spectrum and X band spectrum. So we're representing that here with uh, the closest proxy we could find, which is this QPA 2966. Um, it turns out it, that's a, that's a um, 20 watt, two to 20 gigahertz amplifier. But if we had something that was narrower, for example, like something that was uh, you know, two five to 12, for example, you know, that would be another way to represent you know, an S and X band system using wide band components. And off to the right, it's um, you know, probably the, the approach that we think of maybe first, and that would be you know, a, a S band specific set of amplifiers and X band specific set of amplifiers and combining those or multiplexing those through a switch or some other plexing mechanism over to the antenna. So the interesting comparison here is if we look at QPA0007 reconfigurable technology and compare that to Y band and compare that to band specific um, implementations, um, take a look at how the performance attributes uh, compare. With the reconfigurable, you know, we're about 30 watts of saturated power. Uh, with the wide band system, about 26. And with the um, band specific, you know, about almost 32 at S and then 23 at X. Um, the, the point that may have been surprising, maybe surprising to us, is uh, the power added efficiency for the reconfigurable. Um, it turns out to be um, a bit better than the band specific designs when you take into account the insertion loss of the switch or the multiplexing um, you know component it could be a circulator that's going to the antenna but there is a you know there's a there's a power as well as a, a power added efficiency benefit um, to the reconfigurable technology um, and then if we take a look at uh, the package or the again swap C the amount of size that we have of you know a versus B versus C the reconfigurable package is seven by six millimeters. And, you know, compare that to the, the wideband devices presently in a flange package at 15 by 15 millimeters. And then the, the band specific, well, the, there would be more components obviously to put down independent S, independent X and switches uh, down the circuit board. And so the, the reconfigurable from a swap C perspective, it, it's kind of it shows a real clear benefit of how you know, this type of technology can lead to, um, you know, I mean, real significant um, swap C benefits in a, in a modern radar system. Moving to um, heterogeneous packages, we're gonna move into uh, multi-die uh, transceiver modules. And so any single element of an ASA, in this case, we've got an image of a, an ASA on, a, on an aircraft, you know, there might be, you know, 500 elements of, uh, of that transceiver um, on that particular array. But um, on a larger array, you, know, you can have thousands of elements. So the, the core piece of each of those transceivers is, um, you know, typically broken up into core chip um, plus the transceiver. So the core chip in this case would be, you know, attenuated phase, phase shifters and switches and some amplification for both um, RX side and transmit side. And, the TR module in this case, we're going to segment the power amplifier, the uh, the antenna switch, um, limiter, and LNA. We're going to we're going to partition that into you know this uh, this TR module, 
and talk about uh, heterogeneous packaging and those benefits towards uh, swap C goals. This pictorial is a is quite a good example of the the individual functional blocks, and it plays into the you know, the swap C integration and size and even weight type of um, type of attributes. Uh, but this transceiver functionality can be offered. Um, you know, with individual power amplifier, switch, limiter, and low noise amplifier, all in, you know, SMT packages going down using uh, you know, standard pick and place uh, processes. Uh, but what the heterogeneous integration enables is the, really the, the packaging of these, of these four die that are on different semiconductor process technologies and integrating those into a single you know, seven by five millimeter um, you know, effectively QFN. And so this particular QPF5010, it integrates each of the pieces that you see on the left, the PA, the switch, uh, limiter, and LNA, um, in a fraction of the size and obviously um, lower weight. So, uh, you know, as an enabler to, um, to, you know, to swap C, this is um, a very interesting enabling technology in this particular case for, for X-band uh, radar systems. This is the uh, QPF10 and uh, in finer technical detail. So at the high level, you know, it's a 10 watt transmit receive module um, operating over the full eight to 12 gigahertz uh, frequency range. Um, power out of efficiency on the transmit side, 30 to 40%, which is uh, quite outstanding. Uh, you know, high large signal gain at 22 dB. Um, Technology-wise, both the, the PA and the switch die are GAN 1.5 technology. On the receive side, uh, we've got 2.2 dB of overall noise figure in the receive chain um, at a 1.8 volt bias point. Um, receive side components, we've got both um, you know, gas-based low noise amplifier and a gas-based uh, V-pin limiter. There's another way that the um, heterogeneous packaging could be used for you know, a different topology. Um, in this case, um, the customer requires um, uh, antenna diversity. So you get a, a ASA phased array, and the system requirement calls for both um, you know, vertical polarization, horizontal, horizontal polarization um, at the antennas. So in that case, if, if we were doing this discreetly, we'd add a second TR switch, um, you know, lay that lay that out on the host board, and that would enable um, you know dual pole capability. What uh, can take place with the heterogeneous technology is each of those building blocks could again be integrated into a multi die module at a fraction of the size. This is a, another example of reuse of the existing, or to say, existing die building blocks. And this particular example, customer prefers a, a circulator as the multiplexing scheme you know, between TX, RX, and the antenna. Um, again, the individual die can be you know, relatively quickly packaged into you know, SMT package, and then you've got the swap seat benefits of uh, heterogeneous packaging with a circulator type of interface. And moving to the subject of advanced packaging, so you know, where are the, the squeeze points, if you will? And, and, and phased arrays are already um, very complex, node, net, rich type environments for, for RF, DC control signals, um, heat management, I mean, overall size and volume that the systems take up. Um, at X-Band in particular, already very uh, space constrained to build a ASET X-Band. And uh, the packaging challenges increase as frequency goes up and the wavelength uh, decreases. Um, and also the tighter, the tighter integration of components means um, you know, you've got more heat concentrated into a smaller area and we've got to get the heat out of the system to maintain you know, reliability. So you know, the, the path forward is um, you know, the need for just further integration and that provides you know, paths such that you know, size, weight, cost um, can be enhanced. And so you think about, well, more SMT assembly, um, fewer interconnects of all types, um, fewer connectors and cable assemblies, which are, you know, size and weight and cost drivers. And, um, you know, 
presently there's a push to vertical integration, and this is vertical integration as you've seen, and um, and um, like microprocessors, for example, where memory and the microprocessor, you've got chip stacking to accomplish that multifunction technology in a smaller package, and then we've got to get the so this uh, pictorial is, uh, you know, is 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 the present as well as the future in terms of um, you know where you know planar phase arrays are heading, and this is an example where um, you know on the bottom side of this graphic is the antennas, so the antenna element in this case, um, you know, an array of, of uh, antennas on the bottom side um, as part of a circuit board. And then there's effectively, you know, core chip plus transceivers um, that are that are stacked vertically, um, and you know, a multi-die type package. But you notice that you know the RF path is directed um, downward, and the heat path is directed upward. Um, so this is the, you know, this is what you know, the next step of uh, integration and swap C is uh, offering to phase array radars. Um, what's been you know, publicized um, in some, some media reports and some press releases is um, you know, really it, it's, it's copper pillar, you know, GAN flip chip, you know, SMT type of stuff. Um, uh, you know, key thing for advanced packaging for planar radars, um, definitely government DARPA programs that uh, are, are supporting this type of advanced packaging. Okay, and that's total of the talk. Thank you for attending today.